kids in Bristol. Oh, no. We've been wearing out the calculator over here on yeah. Mike McLaughlin. He can make it. Larry, how many caution laps do you figure equal one green flag lap here as far as gas mileage is concerned? Well, I've always figured three to one here. So the way I'm sitting, we got paper calculated everywhere. If we have 100 caution laps, 150 green laps, Jeff Hammond, I believe these guys can make it. Well, I know one thing. If you can make it on, if you can do a 250 lap race here, next race we come here, it'll be a 300 lap race. And he's definitely in the safest place. Oh, yeah. I like where he is. 57 caution laps so far. Another 43 caution laps. What do you think, Jeff? <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, I'm just wondering if there's going to be anybody around and have to worry about gas or not. I considered it. Matt, what you got going on there, buddy? Well, Jeff, Jeff Green is currently riding in the third position. Butch Hilton, you pit it on lap 84. Are you guys good to go for the distance or are you going to have to pit again? I think we're good to go to the distance here. If the tires don't fall off much, I think track position is going to be a lot more important. We haven't run long enough to see if our tires are going to fall off yet. It sure would like to get a little bit of green here and see what the car wants to do. We may pit one more time, but if the car stays under him, we're going to go to the distance right here. And the green flag is green flag. Green flag. Green flag. Green flag. Green flag. Green flag. you got to be pretty impressed with Mark Green. Very yes. looking there. Yeah. Second place. Yeah. He's already made his pit stop. Right. He's good to be. We know he's good to go. To sure, he can go. But he's going to have a mirror full of Jeff Green here in a second in that 21 car. And Kevin Harvick in the 29. And our buddy, the 10 car. Riggs is doing a real good job of hanging on to the car and he's getting all beat up, take care of it. Biffle, he's lurking along there. Right now Riggs trying to get by the lap car in 98 of Casey Kane. Top four have cleared all the lap, tra lap traffic. Oh, that's where it gets edgy off the two a little bit. Ah, you run out of racetrack. Yeah, the early. car comes up just enough where you're not sure if he's going to come on over or not. I mean, right now, Mike McLaughlin, 126 laps in this thing. He just ran the fastest lap he's run in this race, wow. 1592. He's out there. He's not having to fight lap traffic. But that says a lot for the tire that Goodyear has brought here. Well, the harder tires, I love them. Man, I'm telling you, they make racing great. It takes that, it, it's, that eliminates an equation that we've had to deal with for so long. And Mark Green in second, 127 laps. He just ran his fastest lap at 15.84. Well, what does that tell you about that 21 car? <laughs> He's closing up on, on Mark Green pretty fast. Scott Riggs gave up a spot to uh, Biffle and then to Spencer. Yeah, well, that was all about trying to pass that lap car. He got yep. up out of the groove, lost his momentum, lost two spots. Second place, Mark Green pulls over. That's little brother by. Good you know move. what? That was a good move. Oh, in the wall car. In the wall turn two, Andy Kirby. No caution. Oh, boy, he's in a bad spot over there, right on the back straightaway. And Spencer against the wall. I think there's some... Turn four. There the might be some fluid wall. down there. Caution should come out. Yeah, caution now it's out. out. No caution is out. Okay, he beats the leader. Nobody gets a lap back. You say the right front down. Bam. The, it looked like something happened. Obviously something happened to that 77 car. Now, what does Mike McLaughlin do? I, I think he has to pit. Oh, I, I, I think yeah. he's, he's got to come to pit road. How about it, Dick Bergen? Yeah, you're right. He does have to pit. They didn't have enough fuel in the car to go all the way. The rest of the story is the car is not as good with an empty fuel tank as it is with a fuel, full fuel tank. Besides that, the driver needs a drink of water. So he's coming in. Well, that's all about balance. Uh, it's picked up too much nose weight. As it burns off that fuel, it puts more and more weight on the nose. It'll make the car push. Put that fuel back in it, it'll give it better forward bite and take some of that push out of it. Pit road's open. Andy Kirby will join Brad Baker, Mike Harmon, and Brad Teague behind the wall. Here's where you come on the pit road over there in turn two, just like we was talking in the beginning, three 30 miles an hour. Box, three tires in the box right here to be out. And he will not stop in the backstretch pits. He's still on pit road out. right here. Brian Vickers and Todd Bodine also pitting. And this is in turn out. three and four stop right, right here. Still pit road, still maintaining 30 miles an hour. He's pitting on the front stretch. You can't pass the pace car. you got to stay even with the pace car. You can pull up to it, but you can't pass it. Then away. And since he's got a shorter distance to go than the pace car, he's going to catch Five, up with it. Four, three, two. Hey, Shane Westerberg is going to change the front tires. Jay Gernary is on the back. Jeff Fender is the jack man. Gas man is Jim Gilbert. And they just had a tire roll away into another pit. No problem. No foul. They've caught that errant tire. Right side's all done. Now they're all set to go in the left. Pull it out the left front fender a little bit. 15 flat. A great stop for these guys. 
was a good stop. Jimmy Spencer comes in as well. That was a very efficient pit stop, along with Stacy Compton, who's laps down. There's Spencer. Here's Matt. Mike, under that caution flag lap, Jimmy Spencer wasn't sure if he had a flat right front or possibly maybe an A-arm was broken, but Johnny Allen just came on the radio and said the right front is down, the right front was down, so they're going to do a two and two. They're going to change right solely on this time and try to come back in and change the left side tires. He's got to back up now because the air hose is right in front of the left front tire and Jimmy's gone. He's going to be coming back in there. Just how quickly your fortunes can turn here at Bristol. You're running up there and fighting for the lead and next thing you know you're in trouble. Andy Kirby going to get a little assist here maybe? Not quite. He got up in the line. He just bounced it off the wall down here. Coming out of four now. What happened here is he got down to turn one. It wouldn't turn. Bounced it off the wall. Probably lodged it steering up, probably got some fender down on the tire when we got down to turn one. May have even cut that right front down. She wouldn't turn. And Darlin had been that many years ago, they actually moved that wall out some. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they've widened this track out three feet. That doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're doing, when you're singing around here in 15 seconds, that's a lot. Jimmy Spencer in the one car just pulled up there after he slapped the wall. There you see the caution flag coming out. And he just narrowly missed uh, losing a lap there as he got back to the line just ahead of Mark, uh, Jeff Green. Yeah, we have 17 cars on the lead lap. Jimmy One Spencer is 17. One to go here, bud. Let's clean them up. Get ready for a restart. Jimmy Spencer, he wants to make sure he don't break the speed limit here. 30 miles an hour. He comes to pit road to get those two left side tires. Boy, it takes a lot of discipline to run all the way around this racetrack at 30 miles an hour. And he's still got to come down here and get his left side tires. Just get it off and go. Uh, they got him for too fast at hey, it, I'm telling you, it just, it's going to be hard to do. Now, since it's going to be the tail end of the, the back, longest back. line. Oh, they got trouble again. Rolling him back. Okay, we got to go. Come on. Let's go. They didn't even get to change the tires. I'm not sure what happened. Did he run over the air hose down there, Doc? Yeah, get going. Get going. Get up on the track. Hey, cars in. Green flag, green flag. He got lights on it, but he didn't get lifts. So Spencer will take the restart half a lap behind the leader with only two tires. He needs a caution to come back out. He yep. needs it in a hurry. He does, right away. The leader's at the line now. Spencer's going into turn three. That's what happened there. Well, the problem for Spencer, they needed to fix that damage right front fender. They just felt like they would not have enough time, so they felt like the biggest problem was to fix the fender and not worry about the tires at the moment. Tell you what, we're looking out at Greg Biffle's car here with Flat Stanley on board in third place. He's got a good race car, too. He's all over the back of Kevin Harvick in that 29. And then, you know, so I just looked at the score mark to Larry, and we were looking at that two car, the one that we said was a thing. Look where he's running. He's still on the lead lap. Still on the lead lap at 13. He can't see out the left window because the sheet metal's all bent up over the side <laughs> of it. But he's still going. Kevin Grubb up to fifth in that 54. New sponsor on board, Toys R Us. You know, he's a good little driver. He drove that 37 car last year, and they put Purvis in it this year. He stepped into this 54 car, and he's been doing a pretty good job in this hot rod. And this is a track he runs well at, too. Jeff Purvis in the 37. He's back on pit road for another stop. of this pack, Mark Green, now tracking Greg Biffle. That's third and fourth. Steve? Well, Mike, Mark Green is just a little bit tight right now. I talked to crew chief Wes Ward, and their strategy is they're going to hope to get another caution in about 20 or 30 laps, and then short pit, take on tires. They're okay on gas, but they want tires in about 20 or 30 laps, and then they'll go the rest of the way. By the way, his brother, David Green, the 1994 Bush Series champion, is spotting for Mark. Well, I don't know. I, right, out, right now, running in fourth, he just ran a lap at 15.84. Uh, well, actually, his last lap was 16.12. Leaders up there running 16 flat. And Christian Elder usually drives this car. Mark's filling in for him and uh, doing a, just doing an outstanding job, i got to say. Good battle among some young drivers here, Darrell. Shane Meal, 47, is 10th. Casey Mears and Scott Wimmer right with him. Jane Mill at the 47, they came up here and tested. He actually wrecked with just a few minutes to go on the last day of testing. They took this car back home, put a front clip on it, the whole front frame section, did the body back over, and they're back up here, and he's sitting there running in the top 10. 
Well, the Casey Mears is using up that back bumper. It'll be uh, doing some more body. Oh! Yep. Oh, hang on, Casey. Oh, oh okay. almost saved it. Caution's on the speedway. Here's a car spinning around, and oh. guess who it is? 63. We're going to get you four tires. Lap 147, Casey Mears, trying to make a pass, runs out of racetrack and slides up to the turn two wall. That's what's put us under caution. 63, Ken Alexander coming around into turn number one. Well, he got his car afterward. He got that nose in there, and this is one of those places where you just aren't sure if Shane Neal's going to give me room or not. If you keep going, you're going to take both cars out. You start trying to check up. You lose control, and up into the fence you go. <laughs> we always talk about give and take. There's not enough time here to almost give and take. And there looks like he's almost going to save this thing. Does he over, just overcorrect? Should have just spun right it off. there. Obviously, now he should have just spun it on out. Hmm. Because it whoops around on you, so you carry a lot more speed there than it looks like on TV. And here's Johnny Sauter right in the middle of it again. No, no, no. There you go, come on. Wow. What Johnny Sauter has not been in, he's had a great view of all day long. Right. Sure right. has. And Ken Alexander gets an assist from Jack Sprague. Keep going. Tough day for Alexander. That one, not his fault. Shane Mill was lucky. Yes, he was. And the caution counter stands at 10. We'll be back to Bristol after this.